This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. Welcome to Texas History Lessons. I'm Michael. Now, several of the past few episodes of the podcast have gone down some pretty interesting paths that I never originally intended. Basically, they have almost all been a continuance of the Lesson Zero episodes that I started quite a while back. They were supposed to have been a brief three or maybe four episodes with an ending that tied into continuing the lesson episodes on early Texas history. But they took on a life of their own, as they tend to do, and various factors guided me into deciding to explore down some avenues that I found interesting. Sometimes I wish I could just stick with a plan and move on, but I don't regret my decisions to learn more and share what I've learned. Everything is still heading towards the same destination. I've just taken a longer route to get there. And I would be remiss if I did admit that some of it has been pretty serious and intellectually straining and tiring for me. For me, it required some deep thinking and reflection on the nature of my view of history and the rules that I intend to follow to create future episodes and to make it clear what those guidelines are. But I also have to admit that taking a break and recording the episode on the Tonka was and their reclamation of Sugarloaf Mountain was pretty fun and more in accordance with what I want future episodes to be. So, before I carry on to the final episode planned of Lesson Zero and an attempt to wrestle with the Texas thing, I wanted to offer up something even more fun. You'd have to be living in a cave to have not witnessed the onslaught of AI on our culture. There's been a lot of debate about what its role should be and the potential threats and damage it might pose, as along with the useful things it could offer us. And I know that teachers and professors have been especially concerned about students using it to basically cheat their way through research and written assignments. I've heard a couple of uh, Texas history professors at the college level talk about how they were addressing it. And... You know, basically, students have always been tempted by easy ways out of an assignment. Wikipedia and articles from websites, some which can't necessarily be trusted, have often been one avenue for copying content. And before they existed, people would simply rely on good old-fashioned encyclopedia articles and copy it out and try to present it as their own work. All of those have valid uses as starting points, however. They can help familiarize yourself with a topic and can be a good entry points for learning, but should not be the only thing relied on, nor should they simply be copied from. You can start with them, but you should always dig deeper and check them, especially Wikipedia and definitely for AI if you choose to try them. The footnotes and sources sections of Wikipedia can sometimes lead you to better, more reliable information. That is a good practice for research, even when you are using good old-fashioned history books. Check the sources that the author cites when you're working on something. When it comes to AI, I would suggest that you avoid it. It can provide directions to works that you might not have heard of, but the simple fact remains... From tests that I've done, it doesn't always offer accurate and reliable or comprehensive coverage of topics. On the other hand, it can be a fun diversion and provide some interesting art. Google's AI, Gemini, has created some very cool Texas history maps and art when prompted correctly. 
this podcast has not and will never be written by AI, except for asking it questions about very specific things that Googling doesn't quite offer. That's something I've experimented with, but I'm not really even trusting that. For example, I asked ChatGPT to provide a history of historical research, and it provided some interesting content to explore, fact check, and verify. I would not rely on it for actual writing or research. There are some fun uses that I've explored, and that's what I want to share with for the rest of this episode. For starters, I asked ChatGBT to create some names for a Texas history podcast. And uh, I wish I'd have thought of that before I started this podcast. It wasn't something that I could do back then. I might have gone with a different one. But here are some of the ones that came up with. Lone Star Chronicles, Texas Tapestry, Threads of History, Frontier Tales, Unveiling Texas's Past, Lone Star Lore, Echoes of History, Texas Time Capsule, Cattle Trails and Oil Wells, Texas Stories, Lone Star Legacy, This Time Traveler, Pioneers and Progress, a Texas history podcast, Alamo Echoes, Unearthing Texas's Heritage. You get the gist. Some good ones. Lone Star Legacy, Tales from Texas Frontier. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty good stuff there. And then I asked for some names for just more like general history podcasts, not specifically focused on Texas. And it said Time Warp Tales, Chronicles Unveiled, Historical Echoes, Past Horizons. Things along those lines. History unearthed, stories through time, pages of the past. And then I decided to try something a little bit different. I asked ChatGPT to tell the story of Beowulf as if it were set in Texas. And here's what I got. In the Lone Star State, a fearless cowboy named Beowulf rises to face the wrath of Grendel, a monstrous creature haunting the oil fields. Armed with a trusty lasso and a six-shooter, Beowulf takes on this Texan epic, battling the supernatural forces that threaten the oil-rich lands. Not great, but not terrible. I could see that being the plot of uh, what I guess you'd be calling more uh, darker style of Western uh, that messes a little bit more with uh, a little bit of magic, uh, the names for it, that kind of thing, but it's escaping me at the moment. So then I moved on to something I really love, and I went to Cormac McCarthy. Now, McCarthy, who died in 2023, is one of my favorite authors, as he was the favorite author for a lot of people. And it was very sad to see him go, but we have a lot of great works to look back on. He lived and worked in Texas for a period of time before moving on to Santa Fe, and if you've read his work, you'll understand what I mean by saying that he had a very definite and interesting style of writing. Some people don't like it, and that's understandable, but many love it and can get lost in it. And there are a lot of people that consider him to be one of the greatest American authors of the 20th century, if not all time, if not the greatest. And I have heard some people argue that he was one of the greatest authors in the world. I don't get too tied down into that kind of list making. It's nice to think about, but I don't worry about it too much. He's, for me, one of my favorites. I have some episodes on him and his work coming up in the near future. And so for fun, I asked ChatGPT to write about Texas history in the style of Cormac McCarthy. And this is the result. Beneath the harsh Texas sun, the land sprawled in desolation, a vast canvas marked by the cruel passage of time. Dust devils dance on the plains, carrying with them the whispers of a history etched in blood and sacrifice. The rugged contours of the landscape bore witness to a relentless struggle for survival, where the line between justice and chaos blurred like a mirage on the horizon. In the dim light of a lone lantern, shadows clung to the time-worn faces of those who dared to call this unforgiving expanse home. The stories of the Comanches, the Vaqueros, and the settlers echoed through the canyons, lost like echoes in the vast emptiness. The wind, a constant companion, whispered secrets of time, 
when the only law with a colt at your side and the will to endure. Cattle trails cut through the heart of the land, weaving tales of cattle drives and desperate men seeking fortune. The frontier, an unyielding adversary, tested the mettle of those who sought to tame it. The echoes of gunshots lingered, an unspoken language etched in the fabric of the prairie, telling tales of quick draws and showdowns that stained the soil with the sins of the past. In the shadows of the Alamo, where ghosts of the fallen lingered, the air bore the weight of the sacrifices made for freedom. A lone rider, weathered and stoic, moved through the rugged terrain, a silent witness to the eons of struggle that shaped the Lone Star State. The echoes of manifest destiny resonated in the vastness, a haunting reminder of a relentless march westward, leaving behind a trail of broken promises and displaced souls. Texas, a land of contradictions, where beauty and brutality danced a precarious dance. The sun sets, painted the sky in hues of red and gold, a fleeting respite from the harsh reality etched into the very soil. In this Cormac McCarthy-esque tale of Texas history, the landscape itself stood a testament to the resilience of those who dared to carve a home from the unforgiving wilderness, their stories eternally woven into the rugged tapestry of the Texas frontier. Interesting. It's not quite as good as McCarthy himself. It would have been neat to see him write a Texas history book. I know that's not something he would have been interested in. It would have been neat to see what he would have come up with. Uh, but it, it was interesting. It was an interesting test there. Um, so, next I shifted gears and focused on the Missouri-born poet T.S. Eliot. He was a famed poet, essayist, publisher, playwright, literary critic, an editor who lived from 1888 to 1965 and lived a lot of that time in England. And some of his notable works include The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, The Wasteland, The Hollow and Ben, Murder in the Cathedral, and Four Quartets. And here's what Chad GPT offered when I asked to write Texas history in the style of T.S. Eliot. And let me try this out here. In the Lone Star's shadow, whispers of time, Texas tales unfold in rhythm and rhyme. From Alamo echoes to oil fields vast, histories dance, a relentless contrast. Cattle trails winding, like memories unfurled in dust of the ages, secrets are twirled. Spanish conquistadors, a distant refrain, the Lone Star State, where destinies wane, oil derricks bow to a modern skyline. Yet ghosts of the past and the heat still entwined, blue bonnets bloom in the wildflower sea, a canvas of Texas where roots run free. Through prairies and deserts, the Rio Grande flows, a journey through history where time never slows, in the heart of Texas where stories are spun. Elliot's spirit whispers the past and present as one. Interesting, I see some definite hints from some poems that uh, I've read of Eliot's, and uh, that's not a, that's not bad. I kind of enjoyed that one. Now moving on, one of my very favorite people that I've you know respected in my lifetime was Anthony Bourdain. He was an amazing commentator and writer that shared his thoughts in several books and on his travel-related television shows. He likewise had an interesting voice and style that I loved. And so I prompted ChatGPT to write about Texas in Bourdain style. And this is the result. I wish I could do a Bourdain impersonation, but I can't. In the vast expanse of Texas, where the horizon stretches like a promise, you find a culinary landscape as diverse as the Lone Star State itself. From the sizzling barbecue joints in Austin to the hidden gems of Houston's global cuisine, Texas isn't just big in the size, it's massive in flavors. Venture into a Texan barbecue pit where the scent of smoky mesquite hangs thick in the air. It's not just about meat. It's about the ritual, the slow-cooked dedication that defines the Texan way of life. The pit masters, akin to modern-day wizards, conjure up briskets that melt like butter and ribs that pull apart 
with the gentlest persuasion. Hit the Tex-Mex Trail, where tacos and enchiladas tell tales of cross-cultural fusion. In San Antonio, the Riverwalk isn't just a tourist attraction, it's a culinary expedition. Sip on a margarita, sample street tacos, and let the spice of life flow through the Texan veins. But it's not all about cowboy boots and barbecue pits. Houston, a melting pot of cultures, offers a global buffet that reflects the diverse tapestry of its residents. Vietnamese pho joints, Nigerian delicacies, and Texan soul food harmonize in a gastronomic symphony that Bourdain himself would have applauded. Texas, with its bigness and boldness, beckons the culinary adventurer. It's not just a state. It's a banquet where every bite narrates a story as vast and varied as the Texas sky. Not bad. Not bad. I'm not sure if Tony Bourdain would have approved of that, but I, it got kind of caught, kind of caught his style, kind of got his voice in there a little bit, but it wasn't him. But, you know, I enjoyed that one more than some of the others. So I liked it so much that I asked Chat GPT to write specifically about Texas history and Bourdain style. And here goes. In the sprawling landscape of Texas, where the sun beats down like a relentless chef's torch, history sizzles on the griddle of time. It's a tale as bold as a cowboy swagger and as diverse as a Tex-Mex feast in Houston. Texas, once a vast canvas of indigenous cultures, felt the footprints of Spanish explorers in the 16th century. The taste of colonization lingered, blending with native flavors to create a complex multicultural stew. Fast forward to the Alamo, a historical dish with a bitter aftertaste. A handful of rebels stood against a Mexican force, and though the outcome was grim, the defiance echoed through the ages, becoming a spice in the Texan spirit. Cattle trails carved through the land like culinary arteries, bringing the era of cowboys and longhorns. The sizzle of steaks on an open fire mirrored the spirit of a state finding its identity, one seared steak at a time. Then came the black gold rush oil, transforming the Texas landscape and economy, a modern flavor that turned dusty towns into bustling cities and wildcatters into modern-day alchemists. In the urban jungles of Dallas and Austin, skyscrapers sprouted like culinary creations, reflecting the taste of progress. The rhythm of oil pumps now danced alongside the beat of vibrant music and the clinking of glasses in honky-tonk joints. Amidst the oil wells and urban sprawl, the Rio Grande flowed, whispering tales of borderland struggles and cultural melding. Texan cuisine became a tapestry woven with Tex-Mex spices, barbecue smoke, and the aromatic touch of a diverse, global set of influences. Today, the Lone Star State stands on a gastronomic colossus where food tells a story as vast as the Texan horizon, from the chili-laden bowls in San Antonio to the gourmet fair in Dallas. Texas isn't just a place. It's a banquet of history, flavors, and a dash of that wild, untamed spirit. Anthony Bourdain would have undoubtedly savored every bite of this Texan tale. Now, I kind of like that one, too. But one of the questions you have to ask is, how much of this was ripped off from other people's work that was fed into the AI? And using it, would you be borrowing from or stealing from other works, other writers? Was some of this AI-generated content actually something Bourdain said and it was transcribed somewhere? I don't know. Now, to finish it off, next up is one of my favorite rappers, Tupac. Now, Tupac Shakur had some Texas ties. Several of his tattoos, specifically the famous Thug Life tattoo that was tattooed across him, were put on him in a famous tattoo joint, little studio down in Houston. And so here's Texas history in the style of Tupac. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're excited. Here it is, my rap debut. It's not going to happen. I'll try to present it nicely. I wish I could do it honor to the style he would have done, but it's just not in me. And you're welcome for me not trying. 
Now, this one's a little bit different. It starts, it has a verse, and then it follows a chorus. I'm not going to do the chorus every time. I'll, I'll start with the first time the chorus is used and uh, mention the chorus, and then just to get through it. Okay, so here we go with verse 1. And I kind of imagine this in like a, with the beat of California love or something like that. Um, so here we go. In the Lone Star State where the heat never ends, Texas skies blazing, where the realness transcends. From Houston to Dallas, a journey in the South, Tupac in Texas, feel the words from my mouth. And this is the first chorus. Texas dreams, where the stars align and the land of the cowboys, where the sun always shines from the plains to the cities, a story untold. This Texas tale where the legends unfold. And verse two. Out in San Antonio, where the history stands, deep in the heart, where the spirit commands. Austin's vibe, where the music flows. Tupac in Texas, where the strength always shows. Then the chorus again. Texas dreams, where the stars align, and the land of the cowboys, where the sun always shines. From the plains to the cities, a story untold. This Texas tale, where the legends unfold. From the Gulf Coast breeze to the desert heat. Texas heartbeat, where the struggles beat. Through the trials and the triumphs, we rise in the Lone Star State where the spirit never dies. Fort Worth to Corpus, a diverse range, and this vast terrain where the stories exchange. Tupac in Texas feeling the pride and the state where the journeys coincide. So here's to Texas and the Southern Embrace, a place where the struggle paints grace and every step and every rhyme, Tupac in Texas transcending time. There you go, Texas History Fun with AI. Reese's peanut butter cups are the greatest, but let me play devil's advocate here. Let's see. So, no, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely not a problem. Uh, Reese's, you did it. You stumped this charming devil. You are listening to Texas History Lessons, a slow walk through Texas history made in Texas by a Texan for everyone everywhere. Hey, it's an interesting experiment and, uh, you know, kind of scary how good some of it is. I mean, something that would take a normal person a day to come up with, uh, literally 30 seconds or less. So there, yeah, that, that's that's going to do it. I'll be back soon with some more episodes to wrap up Lesson Zero and some other fun things I've got scheduled. I say fun. It's fun for me. You know, I know a lot of people around me, history is boring. And, oh, this is another boring history thing I saw and that boring history person. But, uh, you know, I get excited about history, and I know that makes me strange. But the same people always fall back on using history to defend a point or as part of a information for a story or a tale they're wanting to share. And uh, yeah, so uh, who's who's kind of the odd one there? They, they rely on history, but they just don't want to put any effort into it or show any interest into it. Anyhow, sorry. Then uh, after we get back to lessons here, we're going to just see where the muse takes me, you know. What is Cleo going to show me to follow? I have some stuff on Galveston already cooked up. A lot of good stuff on Elmer Kelton. I found this really cool guy, a preacher in the 19th century, early 20th century, called Sin Killer. And if you're a McMurtry fan, Larry McMurtry, you know he had a book called Sin Killer, the lead, one of the lead characters was Sin Killer. And uh, yeah, this guy was the Sin Killer, and... I don't want to spoil too much. It's going to be a fun one to write and research and share. I've looked into Western novels and Western movies, the Western genre, Texas travel ideas I have, Texas barbecue. you got to cover that in great detail. Texas Pirates, Stephen Crane, the author of The Red Badge of Courage. O. Henry is going to get some attention because he spent his fair share here in Texas. Texas art. Artists that have been in Texas and art inspired by Texas. I'm really fascinated with that personally. And some really interesting, like I mentioned earlier, some really interesting ideas about Cormac McCarthy and history, the use of history in his novels, along with a potential very intense project on Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian that will serve as a historical companion to that novel. Now, I'm not an expert on literature. I'm not a professor of English or literature or anything like that. I'm not going to pretend. 
But I do have an interest in history and I, the historical aspects to it and what he fed into it. And like I said, the ideas. He makes some interesting comments. Some of the characters, especially in the Blood Meridian, make some interesting comments about history. And this list of topics just keeps growing. I've got several book review episodes are piling up. And, you know, like I said, the lessons episodes, which are basically just a mild attempt at a survey course on Texas history, that's going to continue. Jeez, wish I had the time to get all this done. Um, a lot of it is done. I just don't have time to record it. But I will get there. I will get there. I wish I could focus on researching and writing every day. My wife recently helped me in setting up a new space just dedicated for reading and writing and recording. And it's really nicer than anything I ever expected to have use of. And I would love to have the opportunity to someday use it more frequently, be in there every day, learning stuff and writing and creating different things. And that's a goal. It's definitely a goal. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself. So to get to that result, share the show with your friends, history friends, and uh, consider supporting this goal through Patreon or hitting the link in the episode notes on the website or on Twitter like pe several people have. Recently, some very nice person sent me a cup of coffee. You just click on that link and you can basically virtually buy me a cup of coffee and I'll use that to provide stuff for the podcast or not, you know, whatever makes you happy. Don't want to upset you by saying the, if you like something, maybe you could help support it. Hey, why should you? You don't need to. That's silly. That's silly. Why show love for something that you enjoy? That's cool. Okay. That's going to do it. Going to wrap it up. I've been watching a lot of Northern Exposure and I feel like I'm, I'm kind of vamping like Chris in the morning does on that show. Anybody else watch that show? It's really got some really annoying stuff in it, but I can't stop watching it. Our cousin and I were addicted to it back when it was on. And uh, yeah, it was uh, one of those things that watching it through it again with my wife has brought back some memories and it showed me how much I've forgotten about the show. How like, Just the two main characters get really kind of annoying, are they not? Am I, am I wrong? I only really watch it for the others like Marilyn, Ed, Chris. Their stories are interesting. Flashman and O'Connell, gosh, they're, come on, give me a break. It's the same thing over and over with them. Oh, anyhow, yeah, theme music is by Derek McClendon. And uh, please support his music and see him if you get a chance to. Thanks to him for providing that for the show. You can contact me at texashistorylessons at gmail.com. Had some nice information from some people recently and uh, yeah I'm going to be using that in an episode and that's going to do it take care of yourself take care of one another be kind adios adios